Alrighty, Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Baka, this is Maureen Medad Yahoo. You have just joined Living Branch, our weekly broadcast on Shabbat. I want to say Shabbat Shalom to all of my Ms. Baka out there. And all of those, both near and far, to the whole house of Israel, or Yashraal. We welcome you to our broadcast, and we thank you for your participation this week we're going to continue our series on uh, evil well it's got to do with the spirit world so it's evil spirits unclean spirits demons devils all that good stuff all that exciting stuff so before we get started I'm going to i want to um I call it a testimonial that someone sent me, um, and I always like, you know, when I get testimonies that esteem Yahuwah, sometimes I'll be led to read them, and, and I want to read this one um, from a dear brother, uh, Andy. So he says, Shabbat Shalom, Maureen, really appreciated the lesson you may or not remember remember speaking with me from time to time I know you get a lot of people reaching out to you I once contacted you regarding a dream and you gave me some very helpful advice and interpretation when I contacted you about the dream that was about February or so to sum it up I had a dream regarding a desert fishing in the desert separating the clean and unclean and also going to a garden like orchard in the desert and seeing all kinds of fruits and helping to pick the fruit and preserve the fruit and keep inventory of all the fruit you encouraged me to seek Elohim because I had a mission to help the righteous find him since then the interpretation and advice you gave me my parents have started to keep Shabbat hallelujah that's my hallelujah I injected and take Yahuwah more seriously as well as I have been now helping my sister and brother in law and we have been keeping Shabbat together now and even my mother-in-law which my in-laws were in the church family is really starting to question things and be more open to changing and turning away from sin that the church otherwise taught were okay this is after years of having many conversations and them not being willing to even consider hearing anything that had to do with the feast days or Torah or Shabbat or anything. I just thought I'd share that with you, Moray. May Yahuwah be praised through Yahusha. I pray for all these things and Yahuwah was compassionate and heard them. Just another witness to his might and love. So and then he goes on and says that, you know, he had, him and his Isha had their first daughter, um, first child, daughter, and she was healthy. So I just wanted to share. I thought that was um, great to see how the father still works through dreams. And also visions, is if you have them, we just have to make sure that we follow up. Sometimes we don't follow up. You know, we just shrug it off. Oh, that didn't mean nothing. But fortunately, the dear, um, dear brother contacted me. And, and, you know, I don't, you know, I can't say I have an interpretation for everyone's dream. But... The father did give me one for his to help him in what I saw. So, hallelujah for the souls being added. There are many more souls coming. We have to be prepared. And not every ministry is prepared. And what I mean by that is their obligation is not towards truth. Because some people are operating on what they consider truth what is truth to them they haven't searched it out 
they have their own glasses on and no matter you know how they see it is how they see it so you've got to steer clear of, of certain doctrines so we've talked about these and I'm not going to get into them right now I just wanted to make sure that I shared that testimony and Yahuwah is no uh, respective person if you honor him seek his face and do the things that pertain to him he will do the same thing for you Miss Baka. hallelujah all right let's pray we're going to get into this lesson uh, today and hopefully we will discover some things we're going to be in the Dead Sea Scroll and some other resources all right let's pray Miss Baka. get your if you have your tali or your prayer gear um, there, let's pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malik HaAlam. Father, we say, Toda Rabbah, for all of your greatness, all of your goodness, and all of your manifestation. Father, I just ask you to be with us as we seek to do your purpose and your will. Father, you are so wonderful. We appreciate all that you do. I'm just asking you, Father, to give clear direction, help to us to understand your purpose and how you're guiding us and showing us. Father, I give you praise, honor, and esteem for all of your goodness. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah, Amen. All right, Ms. Bacal, let's see here we got our whole crew joining us today, both near and far, so... We just say Shabbat Shalom uh, to all of you and appreciate you for being on the broadcast. And I know there are some on the broadcast that, um, that might not tune in or might not comment as far as uh, being able to comment. But hey, we know you're there. We appreciate you also. So let's get into this lesson. Now, the first thing I wanted to go back um, to the Apocrypha reference. Uh, and I'm giving here the Septuagint because the Septuagint gives a better rendition of the text. Um, in Isaiah 13, 3, I gave command, I bring them. Giants are coming to fulfill my wrath, rejoicing at the time and ins insulting. Okay, and then I gave the Septuagint version of the same word giant, Gabor, is used in Genesis 6, verse 5. Now giants were upon the earth in those days. And after that, when the sons of Elohim were wont to go into the daughters of men, they bore children to them. These are the giants of old and the men of renown. Now I found this in, um, and, and the reason I brought Sirach, or Sirach, depending on how you want to pronounce it, chapter 39, verse 28, because we know that the offspring of the watchers and the daughters of men, they produced children, or offspring. And they became, as we discovered in last lesson, they became the evil spirits. So I found this in Syria, and I thought it was interesting, and it kind of lines up with Isaiah 13, 1. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore stroke, in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So when judgment, when, when judgment hits this earth, you're going to see all kind of things that may have been held captive, released. And you see how um, there, I've even watched shows where these um, 
quantum computers have been communicating with other dimensions. Uh, very interesting. And, you know, a lot of us have heard of the technology that's going on. So you watch and, and just be prayerful and pray that you are counted worthy to be among the righteous. So, you know, we, we shrug off. You know, righteousness, but righteousness, keeping his commandments and guarding them and walking in Torah should be at the top of our list. So let's let's go on. So the first place we're going to hit is in the Dead Sea Scrolls is going to be uh, 1QAP. G E N or is the apocrypha uh, apocry apocryphal Genesis. So we're going to read here, and this is uh, a very good text to read because it give it seems to give stuff that's not uh, some details that's not included in Torah, and so we're going to see here. Is, I'm going to read the whole thing for to bring clarity. It's about Abraham when he went down into Egypt. And we're going to see how an evil spirit was used to punish Pharaoh or the king of Egypt at that time for taking Abraham's wife. So uh, some pieces might be missing, but read along. And what I did, if it uses um, the words God or Lord, I left those intact. Uh, because I wanted you to see the pure uh, translation that they did. And most of the time you'll note if you go back, uh, they use for God, they use El or Al in the text. So let's go here. It's in column 20, and this is 1 through 11. And of course you see right, right here, verse one, they didn't have that portion. And part of verse two, they didn't have. How and beauty is the shape of her face. This is talking about Sarah. And how lovely and how smooth the hair of her head. How lovely are her eyes. How pleasant her nose and all the bosom of her face. How graceful is her breast. And how lovely all her whiteness. How beautiful are her arms and her hands. And how perfect, how alluring is the whole appearance of her hands. How pretty are the palms of her hands and how long and subtly all the fingers of her hands. Her feet. How lovely, how perfect are her thighs. No virgin or woman who entered the bridal chamber is more beautiful than her. So let's stop right there. So the text is seeking to show you why the king of Egypt or Mitzrayim took Sarah. She was absolutely beautiful. Now, lovely in her whiteness, I'll have to um, go back and look that up because sometimes the translators, um, and I've seen this in some other places, I'll have to go back and look at the Hebrew, could be talking about her countenance, how her face shone, you know, how Moses, it, it, there was a glow. So I think this is what, this is alluding to. Okay, so let's keep going. Above all, women, her beauty stands out. Her loveliness is far above them all. And with all this beauty, there is in her great wisdom. And everything she does with her hands is perfect. When the king heard the words of Hyrcanon, and the words of his two companions 
which the three of them spoke in unison, he desired her greatly and sent immediately for her to, fet, to be fetched. He saw her and was amazed at all and took her for himself as a wife. He wanted to kill me, but Sarah said to the king, he is my brother. Now, I want you to go back because many try to call Abraham a liar. So in the previous, uh, in the same text, if you go back further, it explains how Abraham had a dream. And in that dream, Pharaoh was, or uh, the king of Egypt was going to kill him because of Sarah. So in the dream, he was told to say, this is my sister. So this is what um, plays out. It wasn't that he lied. This, according to the text, was divine inspiration. Or this was inspiration from on high. Where he had, the father gave him a plan, so to speak, because of what he knew the king of Egypt would do. Look, he wanted to kill me, but Sarah said to the king, he is my brother, so that I could profit at her expense. I, Abram, was spared on her account, and I was not killed. But I wept bitterly that night. I, Abram, and my nephew Lot with me, because Sarah had been taken away from me by force. Then there's a blank portion. Okay, PowerPoint don't want to act right today. Isn't that something? But we'll get it straight. Well, I tell you, these lessons, something just don't want me to get into these lessons. But that's all right. We're going to keep moving. Because this is going to be helpful to us. That night I prayed and pleaded and entreated and said in my distress, while my tears flowed, blessed are you, O Elohim or El Most High, my Sovereign, for all ages. For you are and I'll have to look that up whether it says sovereign because it doesn't have uh, the the article in front of it. You are sovereign and master of everything and rule all the kings of the earth to judge them all. Now I lodged a complaint before you, my sovereign, against Pharaoh, Zoan, king of Mitzrayim of Egypt. Because my wife has been taken away from me by force. Do justice for me against him. And show your mighty arm against him. Against all his house. During this night. May he not be able to defile my wife. Separate, separate it from me. So that it be known about you, my sovereign. That you are. Yahuwah of all the king kings of the earth or you are the sovereign like I said I'm going to have to go back and, and look at the the actual I mean Dead Sea Scroll text I wept and stayed silent that night the El Most High or Elohim Most High sent him a chastening spirit to afflict him and all the members of his household. An evil spirit. So these spirits can be used as we have stated previously to do Yahuwah's bidding. Because remember He's the sovereign or the master of all ruach, ruach, or all spirits. So, 
In this situation, an evil spirit was sent. Let's keep reading. That kept afflicting him and all the members of his household. He was unable to approach her, let alone to have sexual intercourse with her, in spite of being with her for two years. At the end of two years, the punishments and plagues against him and against all the members of his household increased and intensified. And he sent for all the wise men of Egypt of Mizraim to to be called and all the wizards as well as the healers of Egypt to see whether they could heal him of that disease. So we have here a connection with evil spirit causing disease, but it's doing the bidding for Yahuwah Alakim. Him and the members of his household. However, all the healers and wizards and all the wise men were unable to rise up to heal him. For the spirit attacked all of them. Okay, now we're going on to verse 21 through 34. And they fled. Then there's a blank. Then he he could not knows, came to him and asked him to come and pray for the king and to lay uh, excuse me and he knows, came to me and asked me to come and pray for the king and to lay my hands upon him so that he would recover now remember Abraham was considered a prophet We'll, you find that in the Genesis text uh, in Bereshit where it talks about him being a prophet in the uh, in the Genesis text of Yahuwah comes to the Pharaoh in a dream and tells him then after that he says Abraham will pray for him that he would recover Okay, so let's let's keep reading to lay my hands upon him so that he would recover for he had seen me in a dream. Okay, so it's all making sense. But Lot said to him, Abraham, my uncle, cannot pray for the king while Sarah, his wife, is with him. Go now, tell the king to send back his wife. To her own husband. And he will pray for him. And he will recover. Then there's a blank. When here. Kinos. Heard Lot's words. He went and said to the king. All these plagues and punishments. With which the king. My sovereign is afflicted. And punished. Are on account of Sarah. Abraham's wife. Abram's wife. They should return Sarah then to Abram, her husband. And this plague and the spirit of perulent evil will cease to afflict you. The king called me and said to me, What have you done to me with regard to Sarah? You told me she is my sister when she is your wife so that I took her for myself for a consort. Here is your wife. Take her away. Go. Depart from all the cities of Egypt or Mitraim. But now pray for me and for my household so that this evil spirit will be banished from us. I prayed that he might be cured and laid my hands upon his head and the plague was removed from him and the evil spirit was banished from him and he recovered. 
the king got up and gave me on that day many gifts. And the king swore an oath to me that he not hurt. And so we missing that part of the text. Then they brought back to me Sarah. The king gave her much silver and gold and many clothes of fine linen and purple. And that blank in front of her and also Hagar. So this is where they got Hagar from. He handed her to me and appointed men to escort me to out of Egypt. Then this blank blank. I Abram went with much cattle also with silver and gold. I left Egypt and Lot, my son, my brother's son, was with me. Lot too had acquired many flocks and had taken for himself a wife from among the daughters of Egypt. I camped with him. So, what I want you to get out of this particular text is you see how evil spirits can also do who is bidding and it's quite interesting when we start to look at that text you can see uh, it you know it gives more detail a lot more detail than you um, then then you get when you read the biblical text. So, and it explains some things. So, you know, at the end, I'm going to show you, um, you can get the, you know, for those that want hard copies, um, I will give you a link where you can find uh, a good copy um, the one that I got this particular text from that's that's relatively inexpensive you have to buy it used but it is definitely worth the money so that you can basically you know go back and look at this stuff for yourself And read over the text. Okay, so let's um, let's see where do we want to go from here? I was thinking about just going back and for us. I thought this might be helpful. I was I was going to tell you, um, you know, if you get a chance, let's. Well, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna just do it since uh, since I. Um, And I was just looking at some, doing some text comparison there. So what we'll do, we'll close out these right here. And let's go back to Genesis 12. Make it a little bigger so you all can see it. And let's go down to verse 10. Okay, and there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he had come to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarah his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair, fair woman to look upon. Therefore, it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians 
shall see thee that they shall say this is his wife and they will kill me but they will save thee alive say I pray thee thou art my sister that it may be well with me for thy sake and my soul shall live because of thee and it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair and the prince princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house and he entreated Abraham well for her sake why because he thought she was his sister so it, it, the text makes sense and he had sheep and oxen and donkeys and male servants and maid servants and uh, donkey donkeys and camels and Yahuwah plagued Pharaoh in his house with a great plague because of Sarah Abraham's Abram's wife and Pharaoh called Abram now this is the span according to the text we read of two years so I just want you to just, you know get the connection there not going to go through that whole thing but just want you to see where it is and know that evil spirits can do the father's bidding so when you don't keep Torah you violate Torah you're opening up a doorway for these spirits whether they're unclean spirits evil spirits and I'm going to show you later on no, actually, I'm going to show you right now what these wicked ones thrive on. It's just like, you know, uh, parasites and other germs that we know. Certain environments can cause them to multiply faster. And what you have to do is make sure that your temple is set apart. So let's look here. This right here you'll find in QS, 1QS, column uh, 4. This is verse 9 through 14. However, to the spirit of deceit belongs greed, sluggishness, in the service of justice okay wickedness falsehood pride haughtiness of heart dishonesty trickery cruelty much insincerity impatience much foolishness imprudent enthusiasm for appalling acts performed in a lustful passion Filthy paths in the service of impurity, blasphemous tongue, blindness of eyes, hardness of hearing, stiffness of neck, hardness of heart in order to walk in all the paths of darkness and evil cunning. The visitation of all those who walk in it will be for an abundance of I mean, they, they don't want me to read this of affliction at the hand of all the angels or messengers of destruction for eternal damnation by the scorching wrath of El or Elohim of revenge, revenges for permanent terror and shame without end with the uh, humiliation of destruction by the fire of dark region all the ages of their generation they shall spend in bitter weeping and harsh evils in the abyss of darkness until their destruction without their being a um, remnant or survival survivor of them so these right here there's a there's a spirit that operates and these evil spirits seeing you you have to choose what you're going to do 
whether you're going to serve the Father. And when these characteristics start coming out of you, okay, look at them. I mean, pride, wickedness, dishonesty. So you told a half truth. You know, I'm just, dishonesty is dishonesty, trickery, cruelty, insincerity, impatience, no patience. I mean, just, just think about all this stuff. When this starts to come out of you, it gives these evil ones a ground to start breathing. And then it just escalates gets worse and worse. Okay, now I brought this in because Tobit was is actually in the Dead Sea Scroll. So I just brought this in because I thought it would be good for you to see that some of the uh, Apocrypha is also included in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So, you know, I just exerted a, a, a little portion there and that's in Q 4Q 197 fragment 4 so when you go here the rest the two of them walk together until they approach media the young man questioned the, the messenger or the angel and said unto him Azarias my brother or also Rise, my brother, what good medicine is, is there in the heart of the fish and in his liver and in its gall? He said to him, if you smoke it before a man or woman attacked by a demon or by an evil spirit, they will flee from them. The attack will cease and will not. And not will their encounter occur ever again. As for the gall, it is to anoint the eyes of the man of whom burns had been caused. The scales shall fall from his eyes, and they shall be cured. And when they came into Media and were approaching its bantana. Raphael said to the young man, Tobias, my brother, and he answered and said, Here am I. And he said, We are going to spend the night at Raguel's house. So this brings up another point um, that I, I, I thought about touching on it, but I didn't. So just like Yahuwah can smell, he smells the stench of sin. Remember all of the different oils and stuff that were used in the temple to anoint the priests with. You know, you had a just a, a fine mixture. All this stuff he can smell. So these demons or these evil spirits can smell also. And remember when the watchers fell. They disclosed a whole lot of information to mankind that was only intended to be in heaven or Shamaim. So when you see here, it talks about burning the, um, the, the fish liver and it will cause that evil spirit to go and not come anymore. So you find stuff like this in voodoo and other religious practices where they burn certain stuff that's supposed to ward off evil spirits. So don't think this stuff is crazy. You know, when you read it, it, it has some historical background to it. So I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, we also find um, Enoch 
portions of Enoch in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So I pulled this passage out because I thought it was particularly would apply to what we are learning about the spirits of the giants after they die. Okay, so it might sound a little choppy, but it's it it reads fine. And to the torture and to the confinement in the everlasting prison. And everyone who is condemned will be lost right from now. He will be shackled with them until the destruction of their generation. And at the moment of judgment by which I shall judge, they, they will perish for all generations, exterminate, exterminate all the spirits of the bastards and of the sons of the watchers because they have caused evil to be done to men men exterminate injustice from the face of the earth make every evil deed disappear now the reason I brought this in spirit spirits of bastards okay usually when we think of bastards it's a illegitimate offspring so these spirits were Ill, illegitimate, the spirit of the giants, because the watchers were supposed to stay in their realm. They were not appointed, as we read last week, to have children with, men, with the daughters of men. So therefore, they are dressed as the spirit of bastards. these sons of the watchers okay so just just to show you that at Qumran during that time period these things were known and included in their text now this um the song the songs of sage thought was uh, real interesting it talks about the, the evil spirits uh, their dominion and all on the earth and in all the spirits of its dominion continual continually in their heirs may the sea bless him seas bless him and may all their living things declare then as a blank beauty May all of them is stole before the El or Elohim of justice in jubilation of salvation. For there is no destroyer in their region and evil spirits do not walk in them. For the esteem of El or Elohim of knowledge shines out through his words and none of the sons of wickedness is able to resist. So just another reference here that evil spirits, they knew about evil spirits and their dealings and workings. Now I thought this was uh, particularly interesting. It's called in the Dead Sea Scrolls, this is uh, 11Q6 frag fragment 4, 5. Is called a plea for deliverance. Okay, so let's read this. For a maggot cannot give you thanks, and a worm cannot tell of your kindness. The living, the living, then is a blank, can praise you. Even can praise you all those who stumble when you make known your kindness to them your justice, your instruction to them. For in your hand is the soul of every living being, the breath of all flesh you have given. Deal with us, Yahuwah. So a lot of times when you see YHWH, it means uh, in the text, they actually had the Paleo-Hebrew in the text. And it'll show you right there in the Dead Sea Scrolls if you look in the Hebrew. 
according to your uh, goodness, according to the abundance of your compassion and the abundance of your just acts. Yahuwah has heard the voice of those loving his name and has not denied them his kindness. Blessed be Yahuwah who performed just deeds, who crown, crowns his devout with kindness and compassion. My soul cry out to extol your name, to give thanks with shouts for your kind deeds, to proclaim your faithfulness, to pray uh, to the praise of you. There is no end. I was near to death because of my sin and my iniquities have sold me to Shaul, Shaul. But you, Yahuwah, saved me according to your name. And I have found refuge in your shelter. When I recall your power, my heart is strengthened. And I rely on your kind deeds. Forgive my sin, Yahuwah, and cleanse me from my iniquity. Bestow on me a spirit of faith and knowledge. Let me not stumble in transgression. Let not Satan rule over me, nor an evil spirit. So here you can see this in this plea of deliverance, Satan can rule over you. A evil spirit can rule over you. Let neither pain nor evil purpose take possession of my bones. Because you, Yahuwah, are my praise. In you, I hope, all day. May my brothers be happy with me in my father's house who are baffled by your favor. Forever I shall rejoice in you. Wonderful song. Wonderful song. We, we definitely have to make sure we put in, uh, iniquity away, sins and transgression. Acknowledge them. Okay, now we have another uh, song of sages. I brought this one in because of bastard spirits, which reference the spirits of the offspring of the of the watchers. Okay, praise blessings to the King of esteem of glory. Words of thanksgiving in Psalms of t Psalms two. El or Elohim of knowledge, the esteem of, or glory of powerful ones, Elohim of mighty ones, sovereign of all the set apart ones. His realm is above the powerful mighty, and before the might of his power, all are terrified. And scattered. They flee before the radiance of his esteemed majestic stronghold. And I, as sage, declare the splendor of his radiance in order to frighten and terrify all the spirits of the revenging rev 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 angels, revenging angels, and bastard spirits. Demons, Letha, owls, and jackals, and those who strike unexpectedly to lead astray the spirit of knowledge and to make their hearts allure. And you have been placed in the era of rule of wickedness in the period of humiliation of the sons of light. In the guilty periods of those defiled by iniquities, not for an everlasting destruction, but rather for an era of humiliation of sin. There's a blank part. Rejoice, righteous ones, in the wonderful Elohim or El. My psalm are for the upright blank, and for may all those be perfect behavior praise him. Be of perfect. 
those of perfect behavior praise him. So you can see during that time there was knowledge of these angels and demons and uh, bastard spirits and this he uses the sage here is using this to frighten as he's saying terrify all those spirits okay and there's also um, most books that you read will call them incantations uh, but there were psalms that were uh, like for an example psalms 91 is in that classification they're supposed to and some of them are written only in the Dead Sea Scrolls were written to um, ward off evil spirits and demons so if you get a chance read Psalms 91 um, that's also included in the Dead Sea Scrolls and is categorized as um, one that's supposed to ward off spirits okay now we're looking at 4Q511 okay and here again we're talking about the bastard spirits why they keep calling them bastard spirits because as I said before they were spirits that were not, for lack of a better term, authorized. They weren't legitimate. They, they came from a mixing that wasn't supposed to happen. Just like we get, have commandments about mixing. So when, when he talks about that, we should take that seriously. Because it goes back to a, a principle that happened. Of mixing that was not supposed to take place. Elohim against all flesh and a judgment of vengeance to exterminate wickedness and to vent Elohim's wrath against those who have been purified seven times. Among the set apart ones, Elohim makes some set apart for himself like an everlasting sanctuary. There will be a purity among the, those purified and they shall be priests his just people his army and servant the messengers are angels of his esteem they shall praise him with fantastic marvel and as for me I spread the fear of Elohim in the ages of my generation to extol the name and to be terrified and to terrify with his power all spirits of the bastards to subjugate them by his fear not for all eternal times but for the time of their dominion wickedness so that's broken up so in this in the you'll find that they seem to remind these spirits of where they're going their destination that that seems to be a theme throughout the Dead Sea Scrolls okay now we're going on to a, a little different category okay I won't take up too much time with this but I want you to see it now this is a, a book that I found um, interesting book it's not one you have to add to the library you can you won't find it in PDF but you can find the the complete text out there okay and it's the demons and the evil spirits of Babylonia okay and according to this the various classes of evil spirits now keep in mind this is not scripture but this is just another source that talks about evil spirits. The primitive Sumerians recognized three distinct classes of evil spirit. 
already to torment the hapless wanderer. First came the disembodied human spirits which could not find rest. And some wandered up and down the face of the earth. Secondly, the gruesome spirits which were half human, half demon. And thirdly, the finch and demons who were of the same nature as mighty ones who rode on the Gnosis wind and brought storms and pestilence. Each of these three kinds are divided up into three classes according to the several characteristics of evil spirits which compose them. And the six chief of these are enumerated in a constant Re, uh, reoccurring line. So here he lists the um, the um, different classes and names. So uh, the, the book is the book is interesting. I, I looked through it. And I found some interesting stuff. Um, just like okay. When, when they go through the various classes, the first evil spirit they mention in the book. Uh, and just in case you want to get the book, that's what it looks like. I just put it there, a copy of it. It's called Yukatu. It was originally a spirit, spectrum, or ghost since it once at least used the spectrum of dead man raised from the underworld. This form of magic was a favorite method employed for looking into the future in the East. Uh, necromancy was a favorite method employed for looking into the future in the East. In ancient times, a remarkable instance of its occurrence occurred in the Epic of Gilgamesh. The story runs that the hero Gilgamesh appealed to the god Nogal to restore his friend, Abana, to him. And his prayer was answered, for the god opened the earth and you cut Ku of Ibana rose up like the wind that is probably a transparent spectra in human shape of Nabata who conversed with Gilgamesh um, then they of course they cite the the what happened in Samuel too Okay, then it mentioned the second of the six is Alu, is a demon that hides itself in dark corners and caverns in the rock, haunting, ruling, and, uh, and deserted buildings, and slinking through the streets at night like a para -a dog. It lies in wait for an unweary ready to rush out from his hiding place to envelop him as with a garment. Or coming into a bedchamber by night, it still sleep away from the weary mortal by standing over their bed and threatening to pounce upon them should they dare to close their eyes. So this, this is pretty interesting. Um, and there again, I'm not saying that this is scripture. I'm just reading you what other cultures uh, said or had to say. Let's see here. It is a horrible aberration at times without mouths limbs or ear a half human half devilish creation born probably by the ghoulish some 
man whom she attacked attached herself okay so the third one uh, the third is ikumu or departed spirit the soul of the dead which for some reason cannot rest wanders in a spectra over the earth after death the soul of man and women who die in the ordinary course of nature enter into the underworld that the house of darkness the seat of the god your the house from which none that enter come forth again where they remain trying to cater out a um, wretched existence by feeding on dust and mud and receiving offerings and libation, libation paid to them by their descendants interesting and relations on earth if for any reason these attentions should cease the spirit of the dead man be forgotten then it will be forced by hunger and thirst to come forth from the abode of Hades to seek on earth the food and water which no longer filters through to satisfy its wants and roaming up and down its it sought what might be devoured if it finds a luckless man who had wandered far from his fellows into a haunted place it fastens upon him plaguing and tormenting him until such time as the priest should drive it away interesting so we got we'll read three more and they're real short the fourth spirit is Gilah, a demon which perhaps sometimes assumes the form of a bull since it was once described as the gula the headstrong bull or the great ghost like Ula, it prowls against the streets of the city and apparently it neither male nor female in fact it is sex sexless the word is used in classical Assyrian as a term of abuse well, we find Sennacherib describing the hostile Babylonian as Gala Galu Lunata evil devils okay then the fifth supernatural being is Elu or evil God Presum uh, presumably a more general term for is left indefinite and there is few if any description of it of it like the other spirits okay then the final one is um, the sixth spirit is Rabasu as the name applied a luring demon which as the text quoted above shows sets the hair of the body up on and by little is known of his other characteristics okay so that's I mean it's it's got some interesting stuff in it and like I said I read it because I knew um, just wanted to give you something outside of from outside sources that that's very similar so for next week we're going to I haven't decided yet uh, exactly what direction I'm going we're going to continue the series but there are some specific uh, demons that I want to uh, research and address because I think it'll be helpful to see those characteristics uh, we've been through unclean spirits we've been through evil spirits so seeing some of the demons and what they're called and searching them out might be helpful because we can't be ignorant of the adversary's devices 
So let's pray, Ms. Bakai. Baruch Hashem Yehuah Elohim Malak Halam. Father, we say Toda Rabba for all we've seen and heard today. We ask you, Father, to let us use this understanding to research more, to dig more, to delve more, so that we can have a closer understanding of how the in enemy operates and draw our hearts and minds closer to Torah. Help us to keep your Torah and your commandments and instructions close by us. Father, that we would not falter or slip. Father, we just ask you to help us in every endeavor to be more like you. Father, we give you all the praise. Let us be the sons of light that you're calling for in these last days. Father, I give you praise, honor, and esteem for all my misbaka out there. I pray, Father, this lesson in these this lesson and the series of lessons will open their eyes that they'll see how the enemy operates. Father, I give you praise, honor, and esteem. In the name of Messiah, Yahusha, Hillel to Yahuwah. Amen. Alright, now I wanted to show you something, Ms. Bacar, just a um, few new things on the website. And I'm going to be putting more up as we go. So, what I put here, recommended books. Many of you, um, you know, this is the Dead Sea Scroll uh, that I was reading from. I have both of these. This one is great, but it's a little more pricey. You can find this one right here, good condition used for about 80 bucks, a two volume set, about 80 to 90 bucks. Uh, you don't have to buy it new. The used ones usually are in very good condition. Um, they just came out with a new Cipher, third edition. And it has um, the Apocrypha. It has Jubilee. It has Enoch in it. So um, if you click that link, it'll take, it, take you there. If you want to order it from their website, you can get a 10% discount. Um, when you order it from their website just put in living branch another feature I've added um, I told you recommended this the Septuagint the nets or the new English translation of the Septuagint well what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna put files here so if you go here if you go to files in here here is a PDF copy of that Septuagint. So if you click it, it will you'll be able to download it. Okay, and you just hit the download button over here. See right there, and it would download it for you. You can add it to your favorites, you can do all kind of stuff. So that's you know if you can't afford to get a hard copy this is your next best alternative so I'm gonna actually put some other stuff here um, under files that you can download good resource material so here and there check back to make sure that it's um, that it's not updated and you can only get access to these resources if you're a member of the site living brand living dash branch.org doesn't cost you anything to be a member of the site but you know I have to give some type of privilege to those that decide to join so those I'm making available only to those that are members of the site the files and stuff and I have um, I actually have a Dead Sea Scrolls file that I'll be loading up uh, in the next day or so so keep checking back and you'll see it there and also don't forget this you still got where you can if you want to start learning Hebrew words this is the place right here hit get started got it now it's going to take you through a learning you can change your learning mode you want to do matching tests so right now it's in learning mode so key what is what is key in Hebrew should be because see correctly done 
You can even have it pronounce it for Not you. Because for so you it'll pronounce it for you so you know how it's pronounced. So just trying to give my Miss Picasso tools um, for your studies. All right. So uh, don't forget we also I've added uh, some new items over here to for new believers start here. So if you go to the website for our bookstore, you'll be able to find those. Don't forget, you can still get your Hebrew Ten Commandments in paper or Kindle. It's for you to sit down and teach and train your children. Give them visuals. Also, the Hebrew Passover story. Kids need visuals. Uh, spend some time. Go through the stories with them. Ask them about the pictures, what they think. You know, see what's on their mind. And also, the bookmarker witnessing team, if you need a refill on bookmarkers, uh, just let me know. Go to this website, uh, www.bm.hebrewfoundation, and you can order some new bookmarkers. Just make sure you give me your complete mailing address so, so the process won't be slowed down. And if you would like to support us, you can support us through mail. You can support us through Cash App, PayPal. Um, you can also use our online giving tool. And as things become more popular, we'll take donations in cryptocurrency. So, because that's an upcoming thing. And this is where our online giving tool will take you. You can register to track all of your giving. All right, Ms. Baca, hope this lesson was useful. Uh, send me your emails, comment on YouTube, um, and if you have testimonies, send those to me. Uh, where appropriate, I re will read them, no problem. And next week, we will be on part six. Continue on this journey. So much. I mean, we probably could do this to the Mashiach comes back. But, uh, hey, this is just trying to help Miss Baca. And just a word to the wise. Start paying attention to people's attitudes and actions. Because when you see certain attitudes and actions show up, you can guarantee there's going to be a spirit that's going to come alongside. And if they don't get it corrected, it's going to keep pushing it forward. So, hey, you're in my prayers, Ms. Baca. And let's make this a great Shabbat. Join uh, Moray Lamayahu at 